Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. I want to move my face a bit. Uh, I hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're going to cover a section on geomorphology. I know you've done this last term, and most of you, uh, but it's been requested uh, regarding catchment and river management. Uh, many learners showed that they have an area of concern uh, with this section. So let's get going. Okay, I'm going to enlarge my screen so that we can look at it. Now, let's look at the exam guideline that has to be done. Okay, and firstly, I will get my highlighter and we have to look at the importance of managing drainage basin catchment area. I will talk about these two uh, concepts uh, just now, once I go through this, to say what is the both, okay? Uh, the impact of people on the catchment area and drainage basin with special focus on river pollution, overgrazing, deforestation, and human settlement. And lastly, we look at strategies to manage drainage basins. You know, geography is always a catchment areas. Geography is always very constructive. We always look at a solution. We look at the problem and then look at a solution. Okay, learners, let's go on. Now, of course, we do need to look at important concepts first. And as in geography, in any section, you have to have the baseline knowledge of certain concepts because it's important if you don't know the concepts you're never going to actually understand the work so let's start with the first concept which you've done earlier uh, under the drainage all right and the first concept you looked at was catchment okay catchment and we said it's defined as the area okay the drainage basin in this case that Catches rainfall, which will eventually drain into the water course, which is the river system. I want to just go to a little sketch that you will be familiar with. All right. Now, if we look at this area, this is the watershed. I'll get my pointer to make it easier. This is the watershed the highline area separating two river systems, okay? And when rain falls, there is a rain falling, I think it's a red rain now, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so when the rain falls here, this drainage basin here captures the water, okay? So this area captures the water. Of course, on the other side of the watershed, the other river system's drainage basin will capture the water. So this is your catchment area, okay, where the rainfall occurs and the water is captured. Now, when we say drainage basin captured area, what is the difference? Okay, let's go to drainage basin, all right? And let me get this. I'm getting quite fast with this nowadays. A drainage basin is an area drained by a river and its tributaries. Similar, you can say it's an area drained by a river system. It's still fine. Okay, so let's look at it. All right, let's look at that sketch again. There's your drainage basin. So it's the same area that captures the rainfall and then as it captures the rainfall in this area and then the water drains uh, from all directions into the river system, okay? And that is your drainage basin. So basically, it covers the same area, okay? Then let's look at the other concepts that we need to look at. Two more concepts, catchment management, all right? And here, it's the balancing the use, and I'm going to move my face away again, Balancing the use and conservation of natural 
resources on a whole in the catchment basis. All right? Or basin, I should be saying. I should be changing. Okay, resources in the catchment basin. I must put in an L there. Ah. Okay, catchment basin. Okay? Right. So, we're looking at balancing the use and conservation. We must realize as geographers, there are needs of the people. Okay? They need to use the water supply. They need to use the resources such as the vegetation, etc. But they should use it properly and conservatively so that they can also conserve the environment. So it's time to do a balancing act. Use the environment because we need to. But on the other hand, don't overuse that we damage it totally. Let's create a balance between usage and conservation of the natural environment. That's what we do. Okay. And it can be achieved. That's your little definition or explanation of it. And I'm telling you, it can be achieved through combined efforts of community, government, non-government organizations who must work together to achieve this balance. This is what we want in catchment management, that everybody works together. There's consultation, there's knowledge at all levels, all right? From, from communities to government to non-government organizations, everybody consulting and everybody works as a team to maintain this balance between usage and conservation. The last concept, river management. And this is defined as the management of water sources. Okay? That's specifically to the water sources of the basin. Okay? And part of the natural ecosystem in relation to the socio-economic setting. Okay, lots of words, eh? I'll give you a little shorter one just now, but I wanted to give you this long one first, right? Because it, it brings out the real thing of river management. So we're looking at the management of, of, of the water sources, the ecosystems that exist in these areas of water sources, etc. We want to manage them. We don't want to destroy them. But we have to look at the socioeconomic structures around it. All right, because the people living around it, what's their social economic structure in terms of wealth and social status, etc., in the setting? Okay, we have to consider all that. We can't just say throw the people out. There are needs, social economic needs, and it's different in each area. All right, uh, so we have to look at all that. But if you wrote, it's the conservation, sustainable conservation, meaning that it will last. All right, over a long period of time, it must be sustainable. There must be enough to go on. It can't just be used up. Conservation of, of river and its drainage basin, then that definition would be fine, okay, in terms of defining what's uh, river management. Okay, so these concepts are very important. You need to have an understanding of them. And once you've got an understanding of them, then we go on and look at the rest of it. Learners, please note in all work, there are always concepts that you need to understand first and that you have covered. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, I showed you that. And now let's look at it. Nice, eh? Of course, this is where, don't worry about the words, I just love the picture of the natural environment. Unfortunately, it can't be totally like this. There will be activities, human activities, like cattle or whatever that's found there, and uh, cultivation. Things will happen. But we can still maintain a natural balance. So it's important. Why is it important? Why do we have to? worry about drainage and catchment area management. Okay, so let's look at the importance. Why do we want something like this? Okay, there's many things. Okay, I've highlighted the main ones here. To store, protecting for future use. Store water, all right? We need water storage so that we have water supply, okay, available for us and for the environment. 
you must consider the environment, okay? Then, to reduce discharge, okay? Now, what do we mean by reduce discharge? Remember if you take away the vegetation of the catchment area, what's going to happen? Less infiltration will happen because vegetation reduces the flow and allows for infiltration. There'll be more runoff, okay? And runoff can lead to various things, all right? Uh, flooding, uh, washing away of, of fertile soil, all right? So those things are there. Uh, uh, recycle harmful agricultural runoff because what happens? In agriculture, we use various chemicals, pesticides, and fertilizers. And if it's left open, this fertilizers, etc., can just run into the river and pollute the river. So it slows it down, it absorbs it. Not that it doesn't harm, but it limits or lessens the harm. Okay? Then we need to look after this area, water supply, good water supply, fertile soil, etc., for agricultural purposes, example, farming. We need water supply for industrial purpose. I just gave one example using fact, in factories for cooling systems. Okay. Flood control, as I mentioned earlier, you remove the vegetation, you, you complete, the water flows, there's more runoff, heavier chances of flooding, so flood control. Okay. Domestic use, you need good quality water and availability of water. For people to use at home uh, recreation okay it's more human again like water sports you need it uh, if there's a sub continuous supply of water and sufficient it can generate hydroelectricity and of course okay the natural vegetation you can maintain you won't maintain everything all right because something will be removed for for human needs I hate to say the word once, human needs, all right? So natural vegetation uh, will be uh, important. And what about the bird and wildlife that exist in the area? If you change the environment, they go or they die. You understand? So we need it for many things. This is so, so important to man or to uh, mistake uh, learners. It shouldn't be man. It should be humankind. I do apologize to, to the ladies for that. It's humankind and the natural environment. Okay? River pollution is the first thing man's impact. A nice picture here showing how industrial waste, etc., is being dumped into the rivers. It's a, it's a sore sight for your eyes. Okay, that we could see these things happen and they happen on a regular basis. <clears throat> Lots of laws are coming in which are changing things and we hope those things can have impact positively. Another one I'm showing you, all right, where people are just moving in the sludge and dumping and whatever that's happening, all right? So pollution is huge in these areas. Now, in many of these problems, the solution and the problem, uh, sorry, rather the problem is more or less the same, okay? Like I'm going to show it to you, and I keep repeating that for each section, all right? Uh, I'm going to show you this about a dam, all right? At a later stage, I'm going to come back to the slide, how dams actually slow down the flow of water, okay, to the lower regions. So I do apologize for putting the slide here. But uh, I'm going to come back to it. So look at this river. It gets polluted in various ways, as you've seen from the pictures. Okay? It gets polluted in various ways, from industrial waste, fertilizers, pesticides, okay? Uh, agricultural uh, pollution coming from all those things, untreated sewage, uh, human dumping, there's, there's so many things. And remember when you look at your articles that come out in exams, uh, you need to look at it in context. What is it giving to you there? Remember that don't answer generally. Eh? Uh, sometimes it may just give you people a trick. That is also pollution. Okay, I've given you the main one here. 
Okay, what does it do? It reduces it reduces the quality of the water by dumping all this. All right? Even damages the natural environment on both land and aquatic. The water systems are very sensitive. Very quick, they could die. You understand, some of you have those fish tanks. You just change the temperature and the fish die. You must have the correct thing, so they die. What about the water seeping into the land? You understand, from the rivers, etc. It also pollutes and damages the land. All right, so it's a huge problem. Overgrazing. You can see a lot of cattle there. So overgrazing removes the vegetation. Just eats it up. Okay, leaving the land open. You know again. All right, less infiltration because now the land is bare, more runoff, more erosion, more pollution of rivers. Okay, reducing fertility of soil. All these things come in damaging the environment. Okay, so we can see it removes the vegetation. Okay, because the animals eat it up, it increases the runoff. All right, okay, which results in flooding because now there's a lot of water moving through the area, more erosion, all right, more soil deposited in the river system, reducing the quality of water and the quantity, all right, available because it's been polluted, damaging aquatic ecosystems okay so it makes the ecosystems damaged the quality of water damaged all these things coming together all right created by man again by overgrazing okay let's go to the next one deforestation all right another huge problem and you can see it here massive 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 <clears throat> you know recently and i'm sure you as geographers have watched the news etc all right uh, and uh, you would have noticed clearly what is happening to the rainforests etc due to industrial development and this is a good example down here where it shows you clearly and all these trees are cut off you understand the oxygen supply, the bare land, the fertility of the soil due to erosion, all these things come about. Look at this piece of land, hardly anything is available. All right, and it's the same def explanation again, and I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it. Again, vegetation is removed, it increases runoff, flooding occurs, more erosion, more soil deposited in the river system, reducing the quality of soil and the quantity of water available and damaging the aquatic ecosystems. So I'm sorry, learners, I'm going through the same thing again, but it has the same effects. OK, so all these factors have the same effects. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, I must go my next one to apologize. All right. We look at other impacts. All right. Uh, now, when we look at other impacts that we can consider, and I put in red because I know it, those are the main ones emphasized, but sometimes we never know. We look at something into context and a, and a, and a resource that comes out in the exam can give you other things which are simple and you can apply them. Now, I'm, I'm going to apologize because I'm going to skip back to the dams. Okay. And look at this dam here building of dams, which is needed for the conservation, all right, uh, or, or availability of water rather than conservation. People need water, so you need to store water. But by damming up this area, okay, damming up that area, you will find that here the water gets captured. Here there's far less water available. And when less water is available, it does affect human activity below. All right, but not as much as the environment. Okay, the environment gets damaged because it alters the water supply. 
and the environment has to adjust to that. It's no more natural. So the impacts are great. So there's other effects that can happen. Okay, I'm gonna move back to my one. All right, so what we said here is the, and I'll get my highlighter. All right, uh, firstly, alters runoff by building dams. All right, there's less water, okay? Less water below the dam. Can you see that? Below the dam, because now it's dammed up as I showed you in the sketch, okay? Then, urban development, what does it do? It's concrete structures, so it reduces infiltration all right more runoff okay so we'll have more water flowing i'm going to go a little more into detail on that later agricultural irrigation reduces water for the natural environment because now you're using it for your crops water projects can also reduce water in areas in grade 11 you dealt with the water transfer scheme where you did the Val, uh, Tuva or Val Tugela project, where water is taken from the Tugela into uh, the Stafordine Tave uh, Dam and then into the Val River. And therefore, you have water moving, and there's less water here, more water there, changing in the ecosystems. So these are other impacts by people. Okay. Let's go on. Human settlement. All right, and I'm going to go more into detail what was one of the short points of people here. Now, what do we look at here? All right, in the we find that there's vegetation. Okay, there's vegetation. So there's 25 shallow and deep infiltration means at the sur nearer to the surface, there's 25%, and deep infiltration, there's 25% which is about 50%. I put in a few houses, all right? I put in a few houses, okay? What happens here now? We find from there, sorry, there was 10% runoff here. With the houses and the concrete, it's 20%. Now, the infiltration has dropped to 21, 21%. I put in more settlements. What has happened now? The runoff is now 30%, meaning the concrete surfaces allowing for more runoff. The shallow has dropped to 20, and deeper down it's gone to 15. And eventually when I'm doing something with a huge urban settlement, the runoff is now 55, 10 shallow, and 5 deep. What's happening to that water table, the upper level? You understand? There's all adjustments. So it clearly sees here the relationship that when urban areas develop or human settlements develop, the amount of infiltration decreases. Okay, and it says here, <clears throat> impervious, <coughs> surfaces that doesn't, where water doesn't soak through, and as it increases each time, there's less infiltration and more runoff. Huge problem. And you know already what runoff does. Okay? So here I've got a little note that reduces infiltration and increases runoff. Okay, runoff. It could result in more water and more flooding in the lower region. Or it could have opposite effect also. Right, that's why I said could. It could result in more water usage and less water available in the lower regions. And this is why you need to look at your sketches and your and the resources that you get in an exam. It could work either way, all right, that you need to look at. Okay, so let's go on. And all of a sudden, I'm not going on. Then water pollution again. And I put in another sketch. Uh, life is tough for many people, okay as they go through these things looking for stuff that they could use but you could see the massive water pollution due to littering and dumping and whatever that's happening in this area 
So it's a huge problem in many areas, especially in the developing countries. Okay? So they actually pollute the catchment area. Because the river is part of it. And the river uses a lot of water. Okay? This is what the people do. Okay? They pollute. All right? And they use up a lot of water. This impacts negatively on the ecology of the rivers and their catchment areas. Because when you pollute, whether it's the industries, whether it's the people, it's a lot of pollution that accumulates and lots of it chemicals soak into the ground, etc. All right? And of course, people use, whether it's factories, agriculture, uh, domestic, they use up the water. All right? And this definitely negatively impacts on this. Okay? And some of it again pops up here. All right? When, we, when humans are there, they remove the vegetation, they increase the runoff as normal again, and it results in flooding, more erosion, more soil deposited in the river system. Again, the same thing, reducing the quality of water, quantity of water available for the natural environment, and it damages aquatic ecosystems and land ecosystems or uh, any sort of uh, vegetation, etc., that is found on the land and the rivers itself. Okay, so what you notice is quite a repetition of many of the same factors in each section. Okay, so uh, it's not a difficult section, learners. You need to look at these resources and put it into context. Then, of course, lastly, strategies. I've put in this little sketch here, all right? There's some nice ideas, and then we're going to highlight some main ideas after that. Of course, these are some obvious ones. Using water wisely, that's one of your main ones. Let's not waste water. Landscape character, consider the landscape, okay? Don't just build on steep areas, etc. okay? which could cause more erosion, more damage. Be careful. Look at that. Uh, protected species and wildlife, all right? Management and licensing. You can't just kill, okay? It's sad to say there are sometimes culling season which has become necessary, but you need licenses and management of them. Sustainable construction and design that actually works hand in hand with the natural environment using natural stuff, right, which doesn't sort of look different from the environment and damage it. Even the stuff or the materials that's being used is natural, okay? And then we look at the woodlands and trees, having a certain amount of conservation on that, and statutory life, wildlife sites, and biodiversity must be conserved, all right? It must be, must be conserved. Uh, you can't conserve it totally, all right? Managing waste, okay, where waste doesn't just get dumped into the rivers, etc. Okay, there's waste purification, etc., which I'm going to talk in detail, uh, more detail just now. But managing your waste, because that is a big, big pollutant. Sustainable management of soil. You would have done a lot of this where you talk about uh, proper farming techniques, uh, so that you don't exhaust the soil, no overgrazing, using uh, proper fertilizers so that the soil doesn't become infertile, managing the surface of the water, all right? What, what activities should be happening there, not just polluting it, okay? Preventing pollution, and I'll talk a bit more about that, all right? Uh, you know, we have various things you can use from your past knowledge, uh, putting filters on chimneys, uh, uh, charging people for factories for dumping, okay? Access to recreation and leisure, but I would like to say what excess, okay? Certain amount of excess. Not you having these huge boats in a very, very sensitive aquatic environment, dumping loads of petrol fumes, etc. Okay, uh, uh, land 
affected by, uh, by contamination. We need to look at and assess these things. The land affected by contamination. What effects it has. How can we handle it? How can we reduce it? So we're also monitoring and doing impact studies, etc. Okay. Managing the risk of flooding. Okay. Because flooding not only has an impact on the human, it has an impact on the natural environment. So managing it. Maybe maintaining vegetation where there's areas of heavy flooding danger, etc. All right. Uh, delivering a green infrastructure all right where the emphasis is on natural vegetation okay whether we're building stuff we're using the natural environment okay so it's planned work of green spaces also where you make sure you when you're building something around it you still maintain vegetation all right we have many of those green cities where the streets have trees etc and you maintain some of the natural vegetation in the areas which helps for wildlife for birds for species etc so there's so much things here we could deal with just to uh, go through some of the main factors again improve wastewater treatment all right so the water can be used again Right, when we treat the water with certain chemicals, they can. Maximizing wastewater reuse. Can you see it? For irrigation. Let's use the water again. Right? And purposes of generation, maybe electricity, whatever. All right? In the dry season, release stored water in the dry season to keep ecosystems as natural as possible. All right, what do we do here? Remember the dam that I showed you? Now the water is getting less below, and now the water is starting to go dry out. Let's release some water from the dam. It won't totally undo the damage, but at least it'll keep the natural vegetation. Right, and then we say, remove alien vegetation we are bringing in alien vegetation sometimes it's so funny that under the soles of our shoes we bring in seeds when we travel different places and alien vegetation is very tough local vegetation uh, actually uh, brings and what happens is they have when there's a virus protein they can easily be destroyed so we remove the uh, alien vegetation from the area monitoring overgrazing to reduce erosion monitor see how many uh, of your domestic uh, or your animals not your domestic animals but your your cows your your sheep your whatever that the, that you have been farming all right uh, check how much you can put two paddock grazing move them from one to the next to the next to give the first uh, patch of, of grazing land time to recover and that way the vegetation won't die all right, you still have vegetation and you won't have bare land and therefore there won't be much erosion. Proper sewage treatment. You know, the sewage treatment, we hear about accidents where the sewage treatment didn't go well, there was sewer in the water, the uh, problems, etc. Make sure you maintain all these things. All right, and that properly, you monitor that when sewer is going, it's properly treated and the water does not get affected. I would always find this important. Educate people about the importance of catchment and river management. A very important point we tend to forget about sometimes. You know, we can bring in all these strategies, but we don't make people aware of why it's important to do it. We lose a lot in terms of and uh, sort of uh, managing strategies, various things like this. So when you educate people, they realize, hey, we need to conserve, we need to save water, we need not litter. So it's very, very important. And of course, monitor and improve water purification works. Monitor them. Everything has a lifespan. All right? And if it is going down in quality, monitor it, fix it. Or work on scientific research and improve it so we get better quality and we let better quality water into the system. So various factors, all right? Learners, it's a lovely section, all right? It, 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 it's easy to understand, okay? Now, I want to show you when I was talking about uh, 
using resources properly in an exam. Look at what you get in your resource. Don't, although it's an easy section, many times examiners gives you specific stuff in the resource that they want you to identify. So go through your resource again, like in any question. So let's do an exam paper or question rather. Let's look at what it's got here. Again, notice the examiner gives you an overview, what is the resource about? It's impact of people. Okay, impact of people. All right, on rivers. All right, so already you picture in your mind people littering. Maybe it's not on the sketch, but you already studied that. So you already you got a visual in your head, what we're looking at. Okay, look at here. Examiners put words, and again, when examiners put information, they're going to use it, or they're directing you to something. Please, again, no question happy. You go through the resource first, and the more you practice, the quicker you do the resource assessment. So loose soil. Of course, maybe vegetation has been removed, soil has been loose now, there's more erosion, more of the soil going in, All right? Look at the houses here along the river. It looks a bit informal, so there's no proper infra, uh, infrastructure, possibly sanitation, all right, uh, unhealthy conditions. This is also being impacted or impacting on the river itself. Ah, there's one here. Can you see it? Littering in the river. Okay, and obviously, the examiner is showing you that this is the river down here. Okay, so we already got an idea, the human back, uh, vegetation being removed, erosion happening, houses nearby, it looks informal from the picture itself. Uh, they, there's unhealthy conditions we know, we dealt with informal uh, uh, settlements at a later stage in settlement geography, but we already got an idea of an informal settlement from our past grades. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not just totally their fault because of lack of facilities, the dumping and the litter. So let's get on with the questions. All right, look at the first one. What does river management mean? And remember, I said you can give a straight definition. It's fine when we discuss river management, conservation of a river and its drainage basin. If you like the longer one, you're welcome to. But as long as you talk about the conservation of the river and its drainage basin, okay, that is fine. Right? Because that's what we want to do. We want to conserve it. Obviously, in more detail, we have to have that balance, but we're conserving it. And that is fine as a definition. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, which government department, I suppose this came through from the rest, is responsible for the health and sustainable use of rivers? It's not in the resource, but your teachers cover it in class. The Department of Water Affairs. Okay, so sometimes you get these questions that pop up. Please don't just assume when your teacher tells you, the Department of Water Affairs, ach, it's not there, all right? It's factors that can come out, so we must be careful, all right? What evidence in the photograph indicates poor river management? Please note the action words in the photograph. So you can't give general factors. You have to look at the photograph and give it from there. Please, learners, sometimes we have this uh, selective memory or selective reading, and we don't look at words like photograph, all right, or evidence. We just give general. We must look at that, all right? Uh, let's go back here, and let's see if the memo matches this. We can see littering. We can see informal settlement, all right? Unhealthy conditions in terms of dumping. We can see loose soil, vegetation removed, erosion, okay? So we can find answers in our resources. 
Examiners don't just put resources in a paper to make it look good. It's meaningful. Please remember that, learners. Very, very important. You can get so much. Sometimes, you know, all the learning you forget that these resources give you clues. So let's go back to, quest to the question we were doing. All right. We can see we already saw development of informal settlements. All right. And you can even hear yeah, if I had to look at this and you spoke about some of the things that are associated with the informal settlement of dumping, etc. We will accept. Can you see? Littering of all types of waste tells you poor. Removal of vegetation. Can you see it? Resulting in loose soil. Can you see it? Disposal of domestic waste. The examiner has to accept that. Because people are living along the riverbank. And if you look at the river, it looked like there was waste thrown in there. All right? And of course, remains of buildings. That was a nice observation. Okay. When we go back to the sketch or the photograph, can we see remains of buildings even dumped here? So all has been taken from the source itself. Okay. Let's go on. Recommend two ways. All right, which municipalities can reduce the impact of informal settlements on the rivers. Now watch. Two ways, municipality, you watching learners? And some people don't, can reduce the impact on rivers. They forget there's an important word in between, informal. So this question is specific to the informal settlement. All right? Be careful on that. Don't just start talking general. It's on the informal. Now watch this. Move settlements above flood line or away from river, isn't it? There'll be less impact. Educate residents about management of river sources. What are we doing here? We're taking all those strategies that we've done and seeing which ones we can relate to the informal settlement. We're not taking it straight, and that's geography. There are specifics, there are specific action words that you have to take in order to answer questions. question. If you put generally and you don't make reference, you understand, to informal settlements, etc., okay, and it must apply to it, Otherwise, it's not correct. So we put it into context. Very, very important. Provision of refuse removal services applies to the informal settlement. Proper sanitation. Running water in houses. Doesn't all that apply to the informal settlements? All right. And they don't have to go to the river now and take. Alternate. I, I, this RDP houses, it came straight from the DBE memo. I like the word low cost housing. Okay. Uh, I suppose at that stage it was still accepted to relocate. Okay. The people away from the riverbank. So use the housing and then move them. Okay. The first one just says relocate them. All right. Above the flower, away from the river. Yeah. We say create low cost housing or as it says in the memo, RDP housing to put them in so they can actually got a place to stay. Vegetating the bare spaces, because if you create vegetation, obviously it's going to cut down the loose soil, less soil erosion. Create buffer zone or buffering to prevent pollution of the river. So maybe a certain radius around the river, no one can develop anything. It just left, so vegetation can grow. Okay? And lastly, all right. Legislation and fines. That even people living there, the informal sector, you cannot just dump. But obviously, provided you create facilities for them to get rid of their litter. All right. You put in fines and legislation saying no dumping. Okay. By anybody. People from the informal or people coming in and just doing the dumping there. And most probably blaming the informal sector. Okay. So I hope that gave you another idea. Let's take the last one. Write a paragraph, eight lines, in which you give reasons why it is crucial, also known as very important, crucial, 
to maintain the health or quality of rivers in South Africa, relating directly to South Africa. Why would we want to maintain the quality? I know we want to maintain the quality everywhere else in the world, all right? But why South Africa? Why is it so important also in South Africa? Okay. And of course, by that stage, you would have learned all your sections. And you know, in South Africa, we have a water problem. Okay, you learned it in your other sections also. So you would have knowledge and this is a bit of integration also. So South Africa has a problem with water supply. Our water supply is irregular, it's less. So we need to maintain that, all right? We need to keep it. So why in South Africa? And you can see it. Limited water source resources in South Africa. Our rivers are only source of fresh, drinkable water. We don't have those glaciers, etc. Uh, supply clean water for essential human health. And now it becomes more general factors. Okay. But also in South Africa, we need to supply water for uh, essential general health. Fresh water reservoirs supply people with food, example, fish. Clean water needed for farming and irrigation. Clean water needed for industrial purposes in South Africa. Obviously, you're writing this in a paragraph. Remember, this is a marker's memo. So you will say, in South Africa, there's limited water resources. Okay, uh, our rivers are only source of drinking water. You're making a relationship between it. So you're writing it in a paragraph. Don't write it in point form. Don't look at memos like this and think you're gonna get the marks. We never guarantee that. Write it in a paragraph as stipulated by the question. So we'll say uh, in, in, our, uh, or in our country or in South Africa, the freshwater reservoirs will supply people with food. Can you see it? Okay. Sometimes you don't have to keep making reference. You made reference in the first place and then you go on in your paragraph. Clean water for domestic use. Ensure the ecosystem remains healthy and in balance. Well, of course, not totally in balance, but at least in balance uh, the best we can, okay, because we are using parts of it for, for human use and needs. Maintain a aesthetic appeal of the area, which could have economic impacts, uh, social impacts, psychological impacts. You don't want to see a dirty area, all right? So aesthetic area means a beautiful appeal in the area, essential for water recreation, activities, maybe minor factors now compared to the ones before, but they do apply to the question, okay? Because we're looking at a lot of tourism, etc. that's big in our country, all right? So it's used for tourist attraction. So can you see, sometimes you look at the question itself, it looks quite heavy, but actually the answers are not. You read into the question, you make it specific to what we're talking about, okay? It's important to maintain the health and quality. Why is it important to keep that? And then suddenly the reasons are not difficult. Okay? Okay, colleagues. Uh, I'm going to call you colleagues instead of learners. All right? Because now you're at my level. Your understanding is up there. But anyway, learners, you keep well till our next lesson. All the best.